Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, October 2nd, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the crazed gunman who murdered 10 people yesterday in Oregon asked his defenseless victims if they were Christians before he shot them. And then he told them one by one to stand up and goes, are you a Christian? If they answered yes, boom. Execution. Just like Columbine. Yep. Meanwhile, still no word from Barack Obama about the weekly mass shootings in Chicago. Then, the Russian Air Force strikes again, this time successfully destroying an ISIS command center and training camp. Plus, are there any atheists in foxholes? You know, I, I met a lot of atheists when I was deployed, and I'm telling you, when the bullets start flying, the rounds start coming in, the artillery's going, the RPGs are flying... You'll hear every man out there screaming and crying to God, shaking, asking for forgiveness. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I want more candy. I want more video games. Why, why, why? And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWars <laughs> Well, it's one day later, and here's what we know about the Oregon shooting. It once again happened in a gun-free zone, so there were sitting ducks. The shooter obtained all of his guns legally, which means none of those common sense gun reform laws would have worked. And people who were trained to deal with crisis situations like this were prevented from doing anything to stop it. And also we know, once again, it was a loser who wanted a slaughter which is why he went to a gun-free zone. He did not want a shootout. Now, the, this uh, Oregon College gunman, he was a 26-year-old. He apparently was celebratory of other mass murderers. He attended a school for students with emotional issues. And he also said, the more people you kill, the more you're in the limelight. And this, of course, was after he was praising the TV shooter, Vester Flanagan. Uh, also, according to some of his social media accounts, he apparently idolized the violence of Nazi Germany and the Irish Republic Army. According to his profile on a dating site, he considers himself mixed race. He's a conservative Republican, not religious, and he lives lived with his mother. Now, what we also know about the shooter is that he singled out Christians during this rampage. Now, the, it's reported by witnesses and people who were there that the gunman made his victims lie down on the ground and then he had them stand up one at a time saying, cite out your religion. Um, if they answered that they were Christian, he would say, well, great for you. You're gonna be meeting God in about one second. And he would shoot them in the head. And others who were of a different religion or didn't answer were shot elsewhere uh, in their body. So they say that there's no motive yet, but apparently he did leave behind a hate-filled note. Now, again, he acquired all of his firearms legally. There was, we have no motive other than the fact that he was singling out Christians, um, but that did not stop people, including the president, for immediately pushing for stricter gun control this includes the president who delivered a 12 minute tirade immediately following this event. Now, before he even went out to the podium to speak, officials had confirmed that the shooter was targeting his victims based on their religion, but the president never once called for religious tolerance. Before we even knew who the gunman was or what his motive was, the president took to the podium to make the case for gun control, and he even admitted right there that he was politicizing the incident before the body count was even in. 
selective outrage, Obama hasn't said a damn word about routine mass shootings in Chicago. Following the mass shooting in Oregon Thursday, the president delivered a 12-minute tirade about the need for stricter gun control laws and admitted he was politicizing the incident before the body count was even in. When he wasn't referring to himself 28 times, a visibly angry Obama called mass shootings in the U.S. routine. Somehow, this has become routine, Obama said. My response here at this podium has become routine. And what becomes routine is the response from those who oppose any sort of gun control legislation. Hey, Obama, leave the guns alone. Stop trying to disarm people who are law-abiding citizens who want to protect themselves, their family, their property. That is the right. We don't need a gun law. Our law is the Second Amendment. You keep attacking people day in and day out, and quite frankly, I'm sick of it. This is on you, your anti-gun agenda, Obama. I'm Joe Biggs. You can find more reports at InfoWars.com. So when he wasn't referring to himself 28 times in that 12-minute speech, uh, he was visibly angry and he started calling these mass shootings routine. He said, somehow this has become routine. The reporting is routine. My response here at this podium ends up being routine. And what becomes routine is the response from those who oppose any sort of gun control legislation. Now, he doesn't really actually point out what sort of gun control legislation could have uh, altered this attack, but what we are pointing out that isn't routine is that Obama never speaks about the mass shootings that are happening in cities like Chicago every single day. Now, as widely been reported in the mainstream media, in a 15 hour period between Monday night and Tuesday morning, a total of 14 people were shot in Chicago, including two young boys. Six of those people died. Now, these stats show that in the last two weekends in Chicago, 98 people were shot and 13 people were killed. So this is going on every single day. And Chicago already has the strictest gun control laws in the country. Now, not to mention this college campus, once again, was itself a very strict gun-free zone. And guess what? Someone with the intent to do harm didn't follow the law. He didn't look at that sign on the door that said, don't bring your guns in here. Now check this out. In spite of this gun-free zone, uh, Oregon does have a concealed carry. And so that's the law of the land there. The school really can't do anything about it. And so an Air Force veteran uh, who had a licensed concealed carry gun on him, but he was prevented by staff from intervening in the shooting yesterday um, at the community college during which 10 people were killed. Now, this is John Parker. He says he was situated in a building about 200 yards away from where the shooting began. And he said that there were a few people in this vet center. And then when he heard the shooting happen, he said, we got up and we were gonna go out and see what he could do. Immediately, the school staff stopped us and told us to get inside of the building. Essentially, the staff wouldn't let us go to assist. And according to the Associated Press, the single security officer who was working on campus was also unarmed. Now, a former security guard at the Oregon College exclusively revealed to InfoWars uh, that the college voted against hiring armed security guards just last year. And they put that money into other projects to, you know, build uh, new structures there on campus. Uh, he also said that an, an inadequate lockdown procedure ensured that the campus was a death trap for potential victims in an active shooter situation. And they actu actually uh, held one of these active shooter drills just a week before this took place. So obviously you can see some of the failure of the protocols there. And not to mention, he points out that the school's emergency notification system failed, which means that there were no notifications sent to students or teachers uh, who were off campus or who might have been on their way to the school. So they weren't even alerted as well that there was uh, something going down and not to come to campus. So you can read that article in its entirety to get his rundown on some of the uh, policies and procedures that made these students sitting ducks uh, but the point here is, is that you make it a gun free zone then you don't even arm the security guards that are there to protect the students so I mean it's just double down on making these people helpless and ensuring that something like this is going to happen because these type of cowards don't want to shoot out they want a slaughter and so they go to these vulnerable gun free zones now like Vester Flanagan this shooter wanted fame so of course the media is going to focus on him rather than the countless heroes who 
could have prevented this tragedy or did indeed try to. Um, we could talk about Bill Badger. He was the man who tackled the gunman who shot Gabby Giffords. Uh, there was a Lisa Castellano, who was a police officer. She was off duty uh, and she stopped a shooting rampage here in San Antonio, Texas with her gun. And Nick Melly, he was 22 at the time that he intervened uh, what would have been a shootout at a, at a shopping mall in Oregon, uh, but he had a concealed carry. And he was only 22 and he shot the gunman there. And of course, most recently, we have the service member who fired back at Abdulaziz uh, during the Chattanooga shooting. And there was actually reports that he was going to get in trouble for firing back at that gunman. So it's not the guns but gun-free zones that should be illegal. There's been another mass shooting in America, this time in a community college in Oregon. That means there are more American families, moms, dads, children, whose lives have been changed forever. That means there's another community stunned with grief and communities across the country forced to relieve their own anguish and parents across the country who are scared because they know it might have been their families or their children. We talked about this after Columbine and Blacksburg, after Tucson, uh, after Newtown, after Aurora, after Charleston, it cannot be this easy for somebody who wants to inflict harm on other people to get his or her hands on a gun. More families victimized, more average citizens President Obama may or may not personally offer his condolences to because he is too busy pleading his case to eliminate our constitutional Second Amendment right to protect ourselves and our communities. Pew Research's July 2014 poll, The Demographics and Politics of Gun-Owning Households, found that about 6 in 10 gun household members, 64%, say they often feel proud to be an American. In contrast, about half, 51% of other adults say this. There exists a constitutional mindset and reason for owning a weapon in the United States. The United States ranks numero uno in gun ownership, dominating at 88.8% per 100 residents, according to 2014 numbers from the small arms survey based in Geneva, Switzerland. A group staffed by experts in security studies, political science, law, international public policy, developmental studies, economics, conflict resolution, and sociology. These are the people pushing the international policies to agendize constitutional freedoms we as a nation require in order for our republic to operate. And the media spin on the coverage is always the same. Who cares who the shooter was in Oregon? Why should we? Our immediate and only reality-based concern should be for the families and communities that need to be protected by the next incident, whether it's three months or three years from now. If we could just all pay attention to the numbers. Last year, Breitbart reported 92% of mass shootings since 2009 occurred in gun-free zones. On October 9th, the Crime Prevention Research Center released a revised report showing that 92% of mass public shootings between January 2009 and July 2014 took place in gun-free zones. 92%. Jerome Corsi, writing for the World Net Daily, reported in 2012 that psych meds were linked to 90% of school shootings. Some 90% of school shootings over more than a decade have been linked to a widely prescribed type of antidepressant called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs. According to British psychiatrist Dr. David Healy, a founder of rxisk.org or risk.org, an independent website for researching and reporting on prescription drugs. So what are gun-free zones? Are they really fundamentally legal? Or are they a petri dish for domestic terror? Why is it that good people with guns are banned from having them and there is virtually zero law enforcement in gun-free zones to assure that good people are sufficiently protected by the bad guys who can acquire guns anytime they want? Or is that just it? They are protected as zones where domestic terror can be orchestrated in order to push the motives of a global narrative. The bad guys will never relinquish their guns. It appears we need more stories where the bad guys lose.